Welcome back to Quantitative Reasoning. In tutorial 11, we learned how we can count the occurrences of values in a vector with a table function. In this tutorial, we learn how to compute other kinds of summary statistics for data subsets. Let's consider as a concrete example the data frame IRIS. In tutorial 14, we produced this box plot. It shows that Setosa tends to have the widest sepals and Versicolor the narrowest. Suppose we want to find numeric support for the claim that the values for Setosa are largest and those for Versicolor smallest. For example, we may wish to calculate the mean of the sepal widths for each of the three species. Applying the mean function directly to iris$sepal.width doesn't give us the answer because it returns the mean of all elements in the column. Instead, we would like to have an answer consisting of three numbers namely the means calculated separately for Setosa, Versicolor and Virginica. The desired output should look similar to this data frame. It has two columns, the species and the mean restricted to the species. Let's look at a simple example to clarify the steps involved in this calculation. Here is a data frame with two columns, sepal.width and species. As a first step, we have to split the input data frame into three separate data frames, that is, one for each species that occurs in the species column. Then we apply the mean function to the column with the sepal widths, separately for each of the three species. Finally, we combine the three means and the three species names into a data frame. It would be a lot of work to carry out all three steps, that is, split, apply and combine ourselves. R has a pre-installed function that bundles the three steps into a single command, aggregate. In its basic form, aggregate needs three arguments. A formula to communicate which column in the data frame we want to split and which other column is the criterion for the split, the name of the data frame that contains these columns, and the function we want to apply to each of the subsets. In our case, the first argument is sepal.width tilde species. The tilde is the same symbol that we encountered when we worked with box plots in tutorial 14. We learned back then that the tilde stands for as a function of, so we view the sepal widths as a function of the species. The first argument in aggregate always contains a tilde. Usually there is a numeric column to the left of the tilde, here sepal.width, and a categorical column to the right, here species. The second argument specifies the data frame in the form data equals iris. The third argument in our example is the function mean, so we write fun in capital letters equals mean. When we run this command, we receive the species name in the first column and the mean for the corresponding species in the second column. This example shows the basic use of aggregate, but sometimes we want to apply the same function to more than one column. For example, the iris data frame contains more information than just the sepal widths. There's also a column with petal widths, so we may be interested in the species-dependent means of the petal widths too. We can obtain the means of sepal widths and petal widths with the cbind function. In the first argument of aggregate, we replace the column name to the left of the tilde by cbind. Inside the parentheses, we insert the names of the columns whose means we want to calculate sepal.width and petal.width. The returned data frame has one more column than before, the means of the petal widths for each species. By the way, the C in cbind stands for column, that is, we bind the columns sepal.width and petal.width together. There are more applications for cbind, but at this stage we only need it in the combination with aggregate. In summary, we learned that we can calculate summary statistics of data subsets with the function aggregate. It performs the operations split, apply and combine in a single function call. Usually aggregate needs three arguments. A formula involving the tilde operator, the name of the data frame that contains the data to be summarized and the function to apply to each data subset. Common functions are mean or sum, but we can also use other summary statistics functions. If we want to apply the function in the last argument to multiple columns in the data frame, we use the cbind function. In the next video, we learn how to visualize data subsets with multipanel plots. 
See you soon.